Hi students, and welcome to today's lesson. I'm Mr. Hunter. Today, we will answer the question, how can we describe the shape of land? Are you ready? Grab your pencil and your science journal, and let's go. Hello, I hope you can help me. I am a geologist, and I need to observe a lot of different natural features today. I want to know how to describe the shape of land. I will travel to all these different places across the United States. Are you ready to go on a road trip with me? Let's start our trip at Grand Teton National Park in the state of Wyoming. Wow, look at this view. This flat area is called Antelope Flats. Can you guess where the name came from? I think this area is called Antelope Flats because the ground is flat. I love visiting national parks. Do you? Give me a thumbs up if you have ever been to a national park. National parks are areas of land that are protected because of their natural beauty, plants, and wildlife. National parks provide opportunities to observe and study many different natural features of land. Look at this picture of another part of Grand Teton National Park. How would you describe the land in this picture? I think the land looks really rocky. It looks like snow covers some of the rock. Some parts of the land look really tall and pointy. How would you describe the land where you live? Would you describe the land where you live the same way we describe this picture of Grand Teton? Why or why not? Maybe there are mountains where you live too. Or maybe the land where you live is flatter. Does the land where you live have hills? Do you live in a city by the water? Land has many different shapes. Are you ready to visit other national parks with me to help describe the shape of the land? Great. Our next stops are Hawaii and California. These two places look like they have land features in common. Let's look more closely at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park in Hawaii. First, did you know that Hawaii is an island? Wait, what is this orange matter coming out of the rocks? Yes, it is lava. Lava is the material that formed the island of Surtsey. The picture of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park shows lava, so that tall shape must be a volcano. It looks like it is made of rocks. Let's write those features down. Volcano and rock. Now let's look at Channel Islands National Park in California. I don't see any lava, so let's call this tall shape a mountain. The mountain is an island and also seems to be made of rock. Great work. Now let's travel to Massachusetts and New Mexico. What do you notice about these two places? Wow, these two places are really far apart, but they look similar to me. What do you think? Let's look first at Cape Cod National Seashore in Massachusetts. This area looks like it has small hills, but wait, look more closely. These small hills are not made of soil. Do you know what they are made of? Yes, sand. We call these small sandy hills sand dunes. I also see some flat areas between the dunes, and some of the dunes look flat on top also. Let's compare Cape Cod to White Sands National Park in New Mexico. What similarities or differences do you notice? I think the two places look very similar. Just like Cape Cod, White Sands has sand dunes and flat areas. We have two more stops. 
Are you ready? Let's visit Wyoming and South Dakota. Wow. Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming and Buffalo Gap National Grassland in South Dakota look very different from each other. But wait, we saw Grand Teton before. What do we notice about Grand Teton? Yes, this part of Grand Teton has lots of mountains. Let's write that down. The mountains seem to be made of rock. I don't see any mountains at Buffalo Gap. Buffalo Gap looks flat to me. We call this kind of land plains. Can you believe how different these two places look? I can't believe they are both in the United States. Wow, look at all the different national parks we visited. And all the different landforms we described. A landform is a natural feature on Earth's surface. There are many different landforms in the United States. Wow, we saw a lot of different landforms in this lesson. We saw mountains, sand dunes, volcanoes, plains, and islands. We can add the landforms we observed to our list of land features. This list will help us as we continue to explore and describe the shape of land. What questions do you have about the shape of land? I have a question. How are the shapes of landforms at Grand Teton and White Sands different? Hmm. Grand Teton has very tall mountains. Do you see how big the mountains are compared with the trees in front of them? But the sand dunes and white sands are not as tall. In fact, they are very small. How can we describe these differences in height? We can use the term elevation. Elevation is a measure of height above sea level. The mountains at Grand Teton have a high elevation and the sand dunes at White Sands have a low elevation. Are you ready for a hot air balloon ride? This will be fun. The boat in the ocean is at a low elevation. The boat is right at sea level. Now let's travel up to the top of the mountains. Wow, we are at a really high elevation. Now that we are on top of the tallest mountain. Great work describing elevation. Do you have any other questions that we can add to our driving question board? I wonder, do all mountains have about the same elevation? And why does our local land look different from the national parks? We have learned so much, but guess what? We explored only a small number of landforms as we visited these national parks. We still have a whole world of landforms to discover. Let's review your task for today. Answer the questions about the shapes of landforms and record the questions you have about the shape of land. Thanks for joining me on today's journey as we explored landforms. Your task for today is to complete the Lesson 5 Science Journal. I'll see you next time.